um, when we were creating the, the agenda and coming up with who's gonna speak and when, I wanted to make sure they went on the morning of the first day to continue to give you guys a, a vision, like a proud, proud wife right here. So. Um, last year, these guys came to Flip Hacking Live, had never met each other, had never completed a deal. Neither one of them had completed a deal. They met here, they teamed up, and this year they're on track to do over a million dollars in this business. Is that not amazing? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Dave Beffer and Steve Pesavento. Eighteen. We're gonna have to fill them up again. <laughs> Make it eighteen. So the place you come to find your real estate soulmate. Somebody told me that last night. I thought it was fitting. So I guess we're soulmates of, of sorts. In a little way. In a little way. All right. So Flip Hacking Live 2016. Just one year ago today. You know that was just little me in the back, eager as ever, ready to ask some questions and. And I was sitting right in the middle somewhere taking a lot of notes. So I still got the notebook. Uh, maybe I'll get to that later. Yeah. So a little background about me. Uh, I've been married for 14 years to my beautiful wife, Megan, who's with me today. We got three boys at home in Minneapolis. Um, I think you arranged for the sitter, right? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll call them later. Um, I was uh, also active duty Air Force or active duty pilot with the Air Force. So uh, Bill Allen and I have something in common there. Another thing we have in common is we both wanted to be Air Force pilots. So Bill is Navy, I'm Air Force. So. <laughs> Guess I had to explain that, huh? So I had the honor and privilege of flying the A-10 Warthog for uh, a few years overseas and, and doing God's work there. Also spent a couple years with doing a, an Army assignment the last two years of my, my career, which is probably why I decided to get out. Uh, cool. Oh, thank you. Uh, moved to Minneapolis. We've never been there. Got a good job in uh, corporate America. The dream, right? Woo. Wanted to get out and join the dream in corporate America. Ended up spending two and a half years in that uh, glass prison or uh, office mm. on the seventh mm -mm -mm. floor there. And then uh, after about a year there, I realized I cannot do this for another 30 years. I can't wait 30 more years to start spending my life and living my life. So I started listening to books, or uh, yeah, listening to books, listening to podcasts, talking to people, going to meetings, stumbled across this uh, Eight Minute Millionaire podcast. Anybody listen to that one? Yeah, some goofy dude and his, his cool wife on there started getting my mind right, led me to House Flipping HQ podcast, led me to the House Flipping Formula group. My wife and I started our first flip about five months later, and while we were in the middle of that you know, three to four week max flip, turn into nine months, uh, every mistake in the book. Uh, we came to Flip Hacking, or I came to Flip Hacking Live, met Steven, and we've been trying to blow it up ever since. Yeah. All right, all right, so a little about me, born in sunny Minneapolis, beautiful place to live. Everyone only thinks about it for the cold, but it is a nice spot. Uh, got a couple of great siblings, the oldest of a bunch of, bunch of kids there. Um, you know, I, I graduated college, I started working in management consulting, and I definitely learned a lot, made a lot of money. It was kind of fun, but there was definitely like a lot missing. So I kept searching, moved to Colorado, then California working in tech, and you know, every time I took a step forward, I kept realizing like, God, you know, I'm making money, but this isn't really satisfying me. So I'd move on to the next thing, and you know, just kept changing. Um, you know, uh, Dave talked a little bit, has a beautiful family, single guy, building for a future family, so um, that's a little bit about my why. So my journey, um, in 2016 of last June, I decided that I was gonna you know, push my chips in and kinda go full time into real estate. I've been thinking about it since I was really young. You know, Every person probably has an experience about thinking about watching HGTV and seeing the house flipping shows and you know, this old house and those kind of things. And I always wanted to make the jump, but I'd never thought that I could do it. I thought, well, I have to be older, I have to have more money. Um, but then I just decided, screw this, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna figure out how to make it happen. 
And I stopped taking consulting clients. I stopped doing any other kind of work or any other income. Maybe not the best way to do it, but um, in, in July, I ended up convincing a local real estate investor here in Southern California um, to trade for some mentorship. You know, she had been flipping and done a lot, of, a lot of deals in the area, and I just wanted to be able to follow her around. So I pitched her on building a website, trading some of my skills for some of hers, um, and she took me up on that offer, and you know, between then and August, I'd put 80 MLS offers. I learned a ton about how to comp properties and kind of what it would take to get a deal. Unfortunately, as people know who live in Southern California, which is, which is where I live, um, you know, MLS, it's a tough nut to crack, especially if you don't have a lot of experience. So zero deals after 80 MLS offers, decided to give, uh, uh, decided to give uh, you know, some direct mail a try. But you know, didn't have a lot of money, sent 1,500 postcards, then I thought, well, hey, uh, you know, where am I gonna get the best conversion? So you know, I sent out 3,000 letters and I got a total of 11 phone calls. I mean, needless to say, I was definitely <laughs> a sad guy. I was like, how am I gonna make this work? I, I know I have to do it. And I had heard from another investor in the area about Flip Hacking Live. And I didn't have the money to do it, but I was like, hey, I'm gonna spend the money, I'm gonna drive down, I'm gonna try to surround myself with the right kind of people. Um, and obviously it, it brought us a long way because you know, we're sitting up here now. So. so back to that one year ago, you know, financially I had little money in the bank. I had stopped taking on new clients. I wasn't making any money. Uh, I was living in Southern California, one of the toughest real estate markets I think just you know, to get started in. Definitely can do it. A lot of people in here are, are proof of that. Um, you know, I had, business-wise I had failed in my marketing, wasn't really making any money, wasn't seeing the deals come in, and mentally I'd kind of push my chips all in. Yeah, me financially, I had nine to five uh, job, right? So I was doing fine. Uh, so I had a little money uh, and some runway, like Bill Allen talks about having that runway is important uh, before you make that leap full time. Uh, living in Min Minneapolis, and mentally though, I was battling that fear of going full time. Uh, mm -hmm. Does anybody else ever battle that fear of you know, what, what, what are all the, the what ifs? You know, what's gonna happen if I quit my job? You know, where am I gonna get health insurance? Where am I, how am I gonna feed my kids and my family? Um, so a lot of that, that mental battling, and it took me a full year, maybe a year and a half to get my mind right uh, to a place where I could actually make that leap and go in 100% confident knowing that, that I could make this happen, that we can make this happen, really. Uh, business, didn't have a business. We were in the middle of our first flip, right, Megan? And we didn't have a team. Yeah. So last year, you know, number of deals we had done. I had done zero. Dave, how many deals did you do? Zero. Zero deals. No deals. There was no deals. <laughs> and even, even worse, I'll add, um, that flip that we closed on, our first flip, we actually lost a little money on it. So how's that for an intro? Mm. Uh, and that was, yeah. So, but we still learn, wanted to right? do it. Right? Yeah. So last year, Justin gave everybody the to apply for seven-figure flipping. <laughs> uh, I didn't get past the door. Andy stopped me and said, hey, sorry, man. No way. Uh, why don't you go over there? <laughs> There's something that's better suited for you, which was great. Uh, Justin had this brainchild Friday night, apparently didn't sleep, and said, how about six-figure flipping? And Mike Simmons and Mike Cowper, the Mike and Mike show, you know, <laughs> they, they welcomed me with open arms. We'll and take it you, was, Dave. Yeah, we'll take you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. And that, I, I tell you, that 90-day program, really got us, even though Stephen wasn't a part of it, he'll talk about how he was, uh, how he got in the back door, so to speak. So um, that, that really set us, gave us that foundation to move forward with confidence too, uh, of making this happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm a big believer in trade. I have skills, I didn't have money, and I was convinced that I could figure out a way to, to make it work. So me and Dave had been talking, because uh, maybe we didn't mention this earlier, but. During the last day, Dave had raised his hand and said, hey guys, you know, who here is from Minneapolis? Is that really my voice? Hey guys. I'm not very good at impressions, guys. <laughs> Give me a break, okay? Obviously. <laughs> so my hand shot up and we were at the back and Dave was disappointed to hear that I lived in Southern California but I was from Minneapolis. But we kept talking and we ended up striking a little trade where I had already partnered with my great partner, Mike Foley in the back. Wave your hand, Mike. We are in North Carolina together. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, uh, I was already taking phone calls and already mailing, and I knew that I could sit in front of my computer and I could answer phone calls all day and 
you know, I didn't mind doing that. I'm good on the phone. And Dave was working a full-time job. And so what did you not have, Dave? You didn't have time. Um, right. So Dave had already paid for the training and we ended up negotiating a deal as a, like a little cherry on top, snuck in six figure flipping access. And so pretty much, you know, every day that there was a coaching call, I'd be like, Dave, Dave, send me the videos. And you know, I some questions I'd, to ask. Tell him, ask Mike the question for me. I, yeah, I had a All list right. of questions that Dave would ask because uh, I didn't know if it was like cool, if I could be on the calls, like it was kind of secret. But you know, whatever it took, if I, I <laughs> <laughs> earned our way in. So yeah, why, why did we partner up? So we both really had uh, the same goal in mind. Um, we wanted to go bigger, further, and faster. So me working a full-time job and not having the experience, like literally no experience in real estate. Um, I wanted to partner with somebody who, who knew a little bit more than me and who had some skills that I didn't have and could help accelerate and get me from point A to point B a lot faster. Uh, I knew I could get there myself, but I knew it would take a lot more time and I've got this full-time job. You know, I'm already grinding and hustling and, and kind of put my family on a, as, as on a back priority. Um, I wanted to get there faster and that was, that was really it. So. Yeah, yeah, and for me it was, it was a similar thing. I, I see a lot of value in being able to work together with somebody else who's a little bit different than me. Kind of a, a gung-ho, you know, pack the parachute as you've already jumped out of the plane and figure it out on the way down. Dave's a little bit more consistent and maybe a little bit more cautious, so I together. Don't, I don't jump out of planes. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit, so anyway. you know, that kind of works, works well together. Um, so I just want to point something out, limiting belief alert. I know I've been through it. I do it, I, I deal with it every day. I deal with it thinking about being a part of eight figure or talking up here or anything else. You're hearing our story and you're saying to yourself, I know some of you are, um, well, I can't do it because I have a wife and kids and he's you know, a single 28 year old guy. Of course he can like invest all of his time and energy and if he craps out like whatever, he'll just start over again. Um, but I just wanna point out something that the same reason that you might have a limiting belief is another person's reason of why they're gonna succeed. So just when you have that feeling, you're saying, oh, I don't know if I could do it, I don't know if I could quit my job. Just flip it around and think to yourself, what is gonna happen if I don't do this? How much am I gonna lose by not taking the jump? So, you know, just wanted to share that with everyone. Yeah, and that pain, for me, that pain of not taking that leap and not trying and looking back years later on oh, why didn't I try that, that was, that was a lot more painful than actually taking the leap and the risk. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I go completely broke and go back to working a corporate job and making good money again, whoopie do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So these are our markets, beautiful Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's warm there about three months out of the year. We have Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Um, and me and Dave are partnered in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And then I have a separate partner, Mike, who are partnered in North Carolina. Um, so. You know, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the company setup and, and how things work there. Yeah, so how we partner in Minnesota is we, you know, in a partnership it's very important to define those roles and responsibilities and, and split up and know who's gonna be responsible for what, right? So Steven takes the front half of the business and by the front half I mean from marketing to acquisition, getting the contract signed. I take the back half of the business being taking that signed purchase agreement from a seller and figuring out what we're gonna do with it. Wholesaling it, which predominantly we've been doing or flip it. So, and then managing any rehabs that we do on the flip side. Um, so the team that we have on the ground in Minnesota is a full-time acquisitions manager, full-time dispositions manager. Megan is our real estate agent and we're in the process of looking for another acquisitions manager and a transaction coordinator eventually. Uh, we do leverage between the two markets, between North Carolina and Minneapolis uh, several things, two being some team members. So the lead manager, she's answering the phone calls full time for both markets, just hired her lead specialist to catch that overflow and to make a lot of outbound cold calls, which I think people are gonna be hitting on cold calls uh, over the next couple days as a big, a big thing everyone should be doing. And then a lot of the systems, so Podio, uh, Investor Fuse, all the bulk marketing rates, uh, systems, you know, MailChimp, uh, Mojo Dialer, CallRail, et cetera, and then the bookkeeper which has been awesome. Kirk and Joni, where are you? Bookkeeper's awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so on the North Carolina side, um, like Dave mentioned, you know, we, we have people answering the phones and that's a shared resource. And then we have a, a separate disposition manager in, in market 
sitting in the back. AJ, you can talk to him a little bit later about what we're doing out there. Uh, we have an acquisition manager. Um, we have an assistant that, that helps with bookkeeping, payments, and things like that. Um, we have a project manager who is currently part-time. We're working on hiring somebody that's going to be full-time and kind of be able to take a lot off of my partner Mike's plate back there because he's been building and flipping for a really, really long time. I know he's excited to get some of that off his plate. So um, <laughs> it's a big smile back there. Um, and then our general contractors, of course. We have a couple different crews. We're, we're, we try to cycle through them because we've, you know, like any situation, even with 20 some years of experience flipping, you're still gonna have contractors who don't say what they're gonna, don't do what they're gonna say, and you gotta have some other people. So we're currently looking to bring on another acquisition manager in the market. We believe kind of having two in place kind of hedges our bets if one person leaves. It's gonna help us kind of expand. And then a transaction coordinator or an assistant who will be able to help our disposition manager deal with all the paperwork and make sure that the attorney or title company has everything that they need, um, you know, showings and things like that. So what do you need? Let's talk about a couple of these things. We'll kind of speed through. We're, we're sh going short on time. Uh, what's the next slide say? I don't have it memorized. <laughs> so al alignment, at the, at the very minimum, before you join, you form any kind of partnership, I think the most important things you need to align on that we've determined are your values, your vision, and your goals. If you are not aligned there, your partnership, I, I don't see how it could last very long. So when I'm talking vision, you know, what's your vision of the company? How do you want to grow this business? Do you just want to make extra money, put it in your pocket, and buy some toys, go on vacation? Or are you both aligned into building a multi-million dollar company that runs on autopilot and feeds both of your families? And this is key, and it, it, it rolls into goals, and it rolls into values. I mean, you want to be aligned on these things so that you're pushing forward together faster instead of pulling apart. Because if one person wants to build a lifestyle business and the other person wants to build a business that scales millions of dollars a year and continues to grow into new markets and do new things, those are going to be very different things, and you probably shouldn't partner. You probably shouldn't be working together on that. So um, leads into skill sets. Skill sets, yeah. I mean, obviously, complementing skill sets like any good relationship. And one thing I think to, to highlight here is you don't want to partner with somebody who's bad at the same things you're bad at. <laughs> Right? It makes sense, but a lot of times we gravitate towards people who are like us, right? I mean, I can't think of anybody I'd rather hang out with than myself. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if you do have similar weaknesses, I mean, those got to be some of your first hires. But on the flip side, you know, um, if, if someone has been flipping and has a lot of experience in the business, but maybe doesn't have the marketing or sales background, perfect relationship. So anybody who's new or thinking about starting out, look for somebody who maybe doesn't have the same skill sets of you, um, and you can kind of come together and, and build something faster together. Temperament, I think you gotta get along, and you're not gonna know that. Like Steven and I worked together for about three months before we decided to partner up. Yeah. So didn't know each other a long time, but long enough that we could feel each other's uh, temperament out and, and realize that, yeah, we can, we can work together. You don't want to legally get married together before you really know the person. I mean, because a, a business relationship, you're signing a paper, and it, it costs a lot of money if you decide to break up, and you got to split up the assets, and you got to go your separate ways, and go get your CDs out of his truck and stuff. You know, so you want to make sure that you get along <laughs> beforehand, because otherwise that's like going to be a bummer. <laughs> um, so. Work ethic. I mean, making sure you, you're both pulling your own weight, right? If if one person's working a like I was, there needs to be some sort of expectation there that either they're going to hire out of their own pocket somebody to replace them in the business and do work, or, and like in our case, uh, I made it clear that I was not going to be full-time for, for very much longer. And I think we worked for about six or seven weeks before I, I quit and mm -hmm. I went full-time. Mm -hmm. This is a key one. You know, uh, Mike and Mike talk about it. A lot of other folks talk about it. One plus one cannot equal two. So if, if one plus one equals two, if you're gonna make a million dollars on your own, but together you're gonna make two million, you might as well just do it by yourself unless there's some other reason that it makes sense to come together. You should be able to move forward faster and, and, and do better. Yep, exactly. One, one plus one should equal three, four, 10, 20, infinite, right? Awesome, so I'll run through these real quick. Um, and uh, these are some key questions that you should ask each other if you're thinking about partnering. You know, where do you want to be in two years and five years? That goes to that goals question. Yeah, how do you see yourself getting there? You know, your, your goal is your vision. Um, are you guys going to just 
grind it out and, and get there, or are you just going to take it slow? What's an ideal work day or work week for you? You know, what, what should we expect to see from each other? Are you willing to sacrifice some vacations, some, you know, some rounds of golf to actually get this business off the ground and moving? I think this is key even if you're going to work by yourself. You need to realize that this business takes a lot of time. We didn't, I didn't pay myself for over a year, didn't make any money for over a year. The business is making money, but you know, my bank account wasn't filling up. So going into it with a clear view of what you're gonna sacrifice, I think is key. And maybe that's not the right way to do it, but we were, we were trying to do something specific and that's what worked for us. Right, we actually had the discussion, hey, six months from now, if we're not making any money, if we haven't taken any money ourselves, no profit whatsoever, are we gonna continue to, to, to push forward and do this? And we both said yes. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's a very important question because it could take a long time to get the money rolling in. This goes back to that same question, full-time or part-time or, you know, how much is going to be committed? And it's fine if it's different, but you need to be clear up front. So one year later, you know, we're full-time real estate investors. Uh, we were not last year. I mean, I stopped doing any other work, but I definitely was not making any money. So uh, we're part of seven figure flipping. You know, we have a, a, a great team of people that we're constantly adding and learning more about hiring and, and, and uh, kind of and, and growing together. Yeah, we got the buyer's list, we're growing that. We didn't, you know, we had nothing a year ago. Uh, processes and systems. So we took everything from Mike and Mike and then everything from Andy, uh, Bill, Justin, and just implemented it into our, our business. And that's where we got all of our processes and systems. Uh, between the two markets, looking at 50, over 50 transactions this year. And, 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 and you know, 11 new, or three new construction projects and 11 flips, right, in, in just one year, so. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. And then finally, speaking at Flip Hacking Live 17, which is something we both, we both had that, yeah. Thanks. I, uh, uh, Tara probably won't remember this, she, you know, she talks to hundreds of people every day, but I remember leaving Flip Hacking Live last year and she said, hey, well, you know, what do you, what do you think? What, what are you, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, by the end of next year, I want to be on Justin's podcast and I want to be up here on stage. And so I'm really excited to be able to do it together. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> but you know, now you can see what's possible. I mean, we're nothing special. We just did what... Like, uh, like Andy was talking about his notebook, I just finished up one of those little black notebooks yesterday in our meetings, and I flipped back to the first page. The very first page was Bill Allen's presentation from last year, mm -hmm. and I looked through it, mm -hmm. and I said, yep, we did that, we did that, we did that. I flipped over, Andy McFarland, okay, he told us to do this, we did that, we did that, we did that. We did that, everything they told us to do, and now we're here. So if you're taking notes right now, if you're not taking notes right now, shame on you. <laughs> what are you even doing here? If you're taking notes, <laughs> <laughs> you better implement when you go back home or else that book's going to be sitting there and you're going to grab that book again a year later, dust it off, come to this event again and hear the same stuff and you won't be in any different place than you are right now. So implement yeah. what you hear. I mean, we're not special. We just, we just did it, right? Like we're just normal guys. And I think our, we both talked a lot about this. You know, we looked at everybody and we were able to meet kind of everybody who was succeeding and doing what we wanted to do. We were able to model off of it um, but, you know, if this guy can do it, <laughs> you can I do mean, it. I mean, I think any, we, we can all do it, right? <laughs> so we love you, Justin. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think we have any time for questions. Yep. Oh, that's all right. You guys killed it. Dude, so cool. Thanks for the water. Uh, you're welcome. Anytime, anytime. Grab another one. All right, is that awesome or what, guys? I love it. I love it. I mean, one year ago, they were here. I hadn't, hadn't done a deal. And now look where they are. It's super cool.